Every Athlete Matters is proudly presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. For more info, visit VictoryMuncie.com. Welcome inside Studio B at Ball State University for another episode of our new show, Every Athlete Matters, presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. I'm Rachel Berry. And I'm Ryan Klimchak. Every month, the creative storytellers in Ball State Sports Link will showcase the best stories in Ball State Sports right here in one show. And to get our show started this month, Ball State Volleyball freshman outside hitter Natalie Mincham shares her love for the game and her unique passion in a piece produced by Peyton Monell. Natalie was very much a girly girl, I guess you could say. She uh, liked to wear skirts, and we didn't know what she was going to do growing up. She was very kind of under the radar. Did well in school academically, but we had no idea like what she would really was really interested in. It kind of took a while for that to turn around, probably up until middle school. I basically knew I wanted to do something with the environment, like. I thought about like environments engineering, which was a lot of math. I don't like math, so I was like, I'm not going to do that. My major is NREM, Natural Resources and Environmental Management. It's basically how you can help the atmosphere, like with the pollution or the water or animals and their habitats. There's many different areas you can go into. The job I want to get from this is environmental management, how you can help manage the things of the environment that are kind of being destroyed right now by humans, kind of just fit more with what my passion was. I did some camps of basketball in elementary school and I hate running. So <laughs> that just didn't work for me, I hated it. So I started playing volleyball sixth grade. I was like five, six and so they were like, wow, you're tall, you're gonna make the team. My brother Tyler, he, I think he tried basketball like in middle school, like again, didn't click. Then he just started volleyball freshman year Ball State lost its last match and Mitchum through the middle for Lewis. He plays at Lewis University. He was at uh, Naperville Volleyball Club, played for a year and transitioned over to sports performance. And so it kind of rolled into where we asked Natalie, do you think you want to play for sports performance too? And she's, she was into middle school volleyball at her school. And she's, she does one of those, sure, I'll try it. And so she started Florida's performance in eighth grade and she played there through five years. And, and it just took off from there. She just transformed into this tremendous athlete. We have a national champion in the 18 Open, sports performance. Being at the elite level from the very beginning has instilled that in her throughout the whole entire time. So I think that she's just carrying that over, you know, at Ball State is that confidence. The level of play has allowed her to sustain that. Tyler was very environmentalist. Like he was always playing with sticks and stuff. Like he's like always in nature. He also kind of influenced me to be liking nature because he always was just doing stuff with it. It's interesting. They are at each other all the time, but it's just back and forth, constant work. Sometimes we have to say, will you knock it off? <laughs> they're our youngest, so they're just very competitive, yeah. but uh, they, they clearly love each other. They just like to rib each other and play with each other and compete with each other about who's better and who's not better. Not to mention 6'11", Tyler Mitchum. Something I kind of want to go into is more of the animal side. The endangerment of species, like, it just breaks my heart to see all these endangered species just get killed daily. I think elephants are so cute. So I kind of just want to find ways to keep that from being endangered too. I absolutely love to see how different passions play a part in athletes' life on and off the court. Yeah, and she's really had to step up and be one of those key contributors on this young team with 10 out of the 18 players being freshmen. Well, we transition to football where Ball State senior 
Linebacker Jacob White is the oldest player on the roster, while freshman newcomer cornerback Nick Jones is the youngest. The two visit Nick Jones' dorm and share a few laughs in this next piece produced by Jared Frank. Fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. Jacob White meets him immediately and takes him down to the 35-yard line. The veteran linebacker had that play read like a book. He drops back to pass, a short drop, looks left, fires, and it's incomplete. Broken up by Nick Jones, just a freshman out of Detroit. Makes a big play early in his Ball State career. I'm Jacob White, linebacker for the Ball State Cardinals, and I'm 24 years old. I'm Nick Jones, cornerback for the Ball State Cardinals, and I'm 17 years old. Nick, I think he was kind of wise beyond his years. Coach Elson likes him a lot. He gets on him a lot, and he sees a lot of potential. The second thing I thought, and I'm going to yank his chain because he's mature enough to take it, is if he had ever seen a weight room. He's kind of a skinny guy, but you know, he plays on the field, he plays big, and he's had a lot of uh, really clutch uh, pass breakups for us. When I first, first saw Jacob, I thought he was like an assistant coach or something. And then you see like the staff, like how much respect everybody has for him, because the team naturally just gravitates towards him. You see guys like that, and the first thing you think of is like, what do I gotta do to get to where they are? Nobody knew how old I was. They assumed all freshmen was like the same age. The day they found out I was 17, it did not stop. Every single day. The baby, all rated movie jokes. Whatever you can think of, it's been like that. Yeah, I hear a lot of jokes about my age. Old man, Grandpa White, father, uncle. He called me uncle a lot. It's unk. Pretty much whatever you can think of, I've pretty much heard. This Do you know what would be hilarious? What? If I went to your dorm. That would be high legs. After you. Gentlemen and the scholar. All right. Uh, we back now to where I stay, Stu West. I'm here to show Jacob what it's like to be a freshman again. So you got a house. You ain't had to take the elevator to your room. Right, we took stairs back in the day. We didn't have elevators. Stairs. It's OK, guys. Hi. <laughs> He's a freshman. He's a transfer. God. Like, look at me like I have eight heads. Oh yeah, they gonna look, for sure, it's the beard. I feel like it should be illegal that I'm here. It's the beard. I, I think it is, to be honest. Oh so my god, o. well let's start off with first things first. This needs to be o. used. <laughs> Holy cow. That's the um, quote unquote groceries. Essentials. That's how you get by when you're in a dorm room. This, These, is, a, this is essentials, yeah? Essentials, this, this is how you get by. I need some uh, the ping pong stuff. This is Jacob's, you know, self-proclaimed forte. You're digging your own grave here, man. All right, now look, this is getting caught on camera, so I don't have a choice but to be as competitive as possible. Please hit the table. Oh. Get there. No. Uh. This was a, um, it was a, this was a stressful 15 minutes, which uh, did a lot of, did a lot of negative things to my confidence in this game. I got to play some people not so good to get me back up to where I need to be. It's a good old-fashioned uh, beatdown from uh, from Unk right over here. Thank you for having me. Oh, I can guarantee you I'll never come back, <laughs> but I appreciate the tour today. All right. Back to campus with Jacob White. We out. We out. And you know, Jacob White really continues to be one of the more vocal leaders on this Ball State team. And both him and Nick Jones, they play the game hard. But as we saw right there, Rachel, they're not afraid to have a whole lot of fun. Not at all. And basketball season is finally here. And the Ball State men's basketball team is feeling creative. Luke Estelle has the behind the scenes look in this community project. So today, pretty much, me and my teammates and my little bro, we painted, uh, wrote our initials. I have a little bro Montana with me. Then he probably, he think he the best painter right now, so. Montana Da Vinci. Montana Da Vinci. <laughs> <laughs> Today, me and the team, we showed up around 7 o'clock, 7.30 um, to a great, it looks like a great musical theater, art theater, and we met a guy named Leon, and he had created a mural for us to paint, and so we just contributed as a team to try to come 
and paint as much as we can and, you know, and show love for him doing what he did. Great to have the basketball team here. They were a lot of fun. Uh, it was cool to see their camaraderie uh, all kind of coming together on one thing and putting all their initials up at the top here. So I'm, right now I'm highlighting their initials and making uh, really making their initials pop. So we just got done shooting the men's basketball. It's a part of the men's basketball intro video. Um, we did some stuff upstairs. Um, we've been shooting the past couple days. Um, but yeah, we got the guys come in paint this mural, put their initials on in the upper right hand corner to kind of put a date on it. Who's the best painter on the team? I, mean, I don't know, I didn't see everybody paint, but I mean, from them arguing, it must be either Myron or Kana or Josh, I don't know. They, I'm not an artist, so they can have that. Uh, I don't like to brag, um, you know, JCT, he, he, he could paint a little bit. Uh, my boy Montana came a little bit. No, my man's right here. You uh, already know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they got a little bit. You can do a little something, something. Ace was nice too, though. Yeah. <laughs> JCT, Ace, Cal. Everybody knows me. AC, though. Everybody knows me. JCT is really nice. He looks sound better. It's not like a little fancy name. Tajay, too. I don't know why he acting shy. Tajay can paint. The support from the Muncie community is pretty big because Muncie is like pretty much my second city. With them coming to our games, being behind our back, I feel like that brings a lot of motivation for me and my teammates. It's really important. Uh, we got a, a player that's from Muncie, you know, and just as many people that we can get from local residents, well, you know, it's just great because the more support we can get, the better the events will be. You know, at the end of the day, those are the fans who come to our games. So, you know, any way we can give back by just helping them help us, it's always a good feeling to work with the community. So, I feel like this is a great project, you know, one of the best ones we've did in the last couple of years since I've been here. What up, BSU? We're here at Cornerstone tonight, uh, practicing for our intro video. Uh, the support you guys have for us means a lot, so come out to the games November 5th. We'll start tipping it off. Just saw the men's basketball team, but we now welcome in women's basketball player Jasmine Sams. Jasmine, thank you for joining us in studio here today. Yeah, thank you for having me. So you've been here a couple of years now, a graduate senior. What is the best thing about the culture that Ball State has and what makes this place so special? You know, uh, Brady has been good to me since my sophomore year of high school, so it's been about seven years that I've known him and he really brought me in after uh, my first year at St. Louis and ever since, like, it's always been a sense of family and this year is closer than ever and our culture has been better than ever and we're really holding each other accountable and we just like being with each other and when you're with each other so much and our, with how long our season is, it, it's really great to be able to have those people next to you. And last season you guys had a really young team and you were sort of thrusted into a pretty big leadership position. What are some of the things you taught your teammates throughout that process last season? Uh, Last year, we, we look back on it and uh, we're just going to use it as a learning tool, uh, just effort and like accountability and being able to go at it day by day and get better because that's things that we had to learn last year. Okay, maybe we didn't win a bunch of games, but we got better every day. And that's something that we've done a really good job of this October and September. And like we're going to be young again this year with four freshmen that you're going to see on the court quite a bit. So I think they've grasped it really well and the leadership roles that Ash and I have are very important and we've been able to get to those kids and get them on the right role for us to be able to play. Thank you, Jasmine, <laughs> for spending a little time with us in studio. Well, Max season for soccer has been in full swing with the tournament taking place this month. We got a chance to go inside the huddle with the coaching staff in their match against Kent State. Produced by Parker Webster, this is Mic'd Up. Here we go, third pattern! Just because I want you guys to pass the ball in this song. I like this song. Play! Bring some energy. When we come out with energy, we're right in it. When we don't, we cause problems for ourselves. All right, make sure we bring the right amount of energy to this game today. All right, here we go, ladies. Pulling away by Meisenberg, chips it over the top towards Vital Katz. Lexi Smith tries to get there, unable to, but Tristan Studeville coming out of her net. Hey, ladies, we have to step higher to win the first. Ladies, just wake up. Come on, come on. Gotta be better, White. Foul 
on Kerrigan Johnson there. Shoulder to shoulder, huh? Shoulder to shoulder? She didn't even stab in. Okay, okay. Pass in behind, tries to find Sam Campbell. Now a chip in behind for, for nice. Nikki Potts. Right footed effort, and it's in! It's about seven. There's a center circle there that tells you 10 yards. Good pass in, here's Peyton Cook, left footed effort, still on it, turns the corner, and it looks to be in his. Oh. Yes! 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 <laughs> didn't react to that goal, because I thought it was offside. It was just too awkward looking. But I'll take it. Well done, Lizzie Philbin. Ball State hangs on to win. Well done, all the best. Well done, all the best. Hey guys, we didn't go to overtime today. Well, I That's mean, good. the reality is the sign of a good team. Win, win on a bad, bad day. day, right? You win on a bad day. Certainly, a thank you to Coach Reif and the entire soccer coaching staff for giving us that awesome inside access. Well, football's the known hobby and talent of Ball State senior safety Ray Wilborn. But here's a look at the Ray Wilborn you may not know in a pack produced by Jordan Nemeth and Peyton Monal. Like football is what I want to do, but this is like a hobby. This is something else that I'm good at, so you know what I'm saying? My career goal is to go to the NFL, but probably like some of the barbershop, basically. Have my own barbershop, something like that. I, I'll name it Ray, Ray's Cuts, some with Ray in it. Simple. I'll say a good week, I get like 20. And the regular week, like the, uh, what it consistently be, it'll probably be like 10. Oh, I started cutting hair when I was 12 years old. I mean, I really just, uh, my dad had some clippers in the bathroom, and I, and I, uh, I was cutting myself. And then I started cutting my, my friend, and then took off from there. I was terrible. I, uh, I messed up a couple people, but that, that's how it's gonna happen with cutting hair. Like a fade. Uh, I done seen uh, the finished product. I done let him cut my hair a few times and it looked nice, so I just trust my man. I just cut all my friends for real. Oh, uh, when I got here, I just had to get them some pictures, show them some pictures, and it was over with. It gotta be nice texture here. I like cutting waves for real. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Like Mike, or not, not Mike, but Gerald. Gerald got nice hair, you know what I'm saying? It's in the middle. It's okay. Like medium course, medium course. I ain't really balancing cutting hair because I don't have to do this. So it's like, I just do it on my free time, but uh, football in school is, uh, it's, it's difficult, but you know what I'm saying? All athletes do it. How about that? Very neat stuff from the team barber, Ray Wilborn. Not only supplying the defense this season with several big plays, but his teammates with the freshest of cuts. You know, we've always been told, look good, play good. Absolutely. And like we mentioned earlier, basketball season is officially underway. Redshirt senior Josh Thompson shares his passion for the sport and how his love for the game began in a piece produced by Jack Kaiser and Alex Thomas. This is the Josh Thompson story. That's an eye. That's an eye. He's a splitting image of me. Everything that I watch him do on the court is some of the things that I've done when I was younger or when I played. Chandler Thompson with a here is Chandler Thompson. Watch this baby. Chandler Thompson on a greatness. Crowded. You had to come to the JV game just to get a seat. Chandler Thompson quickly became one of the best players in the state, and so did his team, going all the way to the 1988 state finals. I meant the world to us. I mean, this was a dream come true. After leading the Bearcats to the school's eighth and most recent state championship, Chandler had to choose between Gene Cady's Purdue Boilermakers and the hometown Ball State Cardinals. 
going to Ball State, people looked at us like we were the underdog. Me going to Ball State, I was the underdog. Why you choose Ball State instead of going in? I felt like Ball State was home. In Ball State basketball's greatest era, Chandler and the Cardinals were a mid-major powerhouse, living in the local spotlight, on their way to the NCAA tournament. I mean, no matter, we go throughout the campus, I mean, everyone knew of us. I mean, we were like rock stars, and we didn't even know it. If we felt like if we win the MAC, where are we going and who are we playing against? Ball State drew a 12 seat and went on to upset Gary Payton's fifth seeded Oregon State Beavers and the fourth seeded Louisville Cardinals. Writing its best run in program history, Ball State was confident getting ready to play the notorious UNLV running Rebels. In a close game with just over five minutes left in the first half, Ball State was looking for a spark and Chandler Thompson was the match that struck. Pairs get the ball in the corner. Pairs is not a three-point shooter, so immediately I have to crash the, the, the board for offensive rebound. And the ball bounced off at the perfect spot for me. Brent Musburger was speaking negative about me, saying, well, I heard he had this vertical, I don't believe it. And it's just like timing. I think it was just the basketball gods wanted me to put it in Brent Musburger's face, and that's what happened. The pass to McCurdy. Oh, 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 oh my! Oh, Chandler Thompson, how do you do? Does it ever get old? No, because it keeps me relevant, so that's why I like it. <laughs> While Ball State fell by two to the eventual national champions, following a successful college career, Chandler went to Europe to play professionally. After a 10-year career, the basketball focus in the Thompson family shifted to Josh at Lawrence North High School, with Chandler right by his side. Going into uh, high school, my whole objective was to go to college D1. And the older I got, the more I got better. I knew I wanted to stay around basketball. And so I talked to the coach, Coach Kiefer from LN. He had two openings and I jumped on it. Every time he used to get on me when I did wrong, I used to think, he was getting on me as a dad instead of a coach. But the older I got, I finally realized that he was just trying to get me better as a player. Well, sometimes Josh wanted to do it on his own, kind of like I did, you know. Um, but that's, I guess that's the Thompson in both of us. Josh was quickly coming into his own, but later in his junior season, the basketball gods stopped Josh in his tracks. I tried to go over a screen, turn my knee the wrong way, and I just felt the sharp pain. He was stepping over the screen and he fell. And then when he tried to stand up, I knew something was wrong. Well, I just felt my knee shift one way and back to the other, and it just kept getting worse. He said, I think I, it's okay. And then we got the MRI. The MRI said it was a torn ACL. So that to me, it was crushing because I didn't want it to happen to him, especially at this time of his season when he was getting the opportunity to start playing more minutes. Uh, I remember when it, I first toured and we found out it was an ACL. I remember he just told me, just be ready for the rehab. I had to learn how to walk again and then try to get my knee at 90 degrees. I really didn't have fear of what if it's not the same. I just had fear if I would tear it again. After a full recovery, Josh didn't receive a single Division I offer and chose to play at prep school for two years, waiting for an opportunity. Through a family connection, who else but Ball State and head coach James Whitford came calling. Whitford told me that when, if I come up here, nothing's gonna be handed to me. I'm gonna have to work for everything I got. Like he tell all his walk-ons, you'll be a practice player. I can't promise you any playing time. I say, you have to show them that you're capable of making a transformation into becoming a, a Ball State player. All the hard work I was gonna put in, I was gonna have to do it 10 times as harder than anybody else just to give a chance. He wanted to prove that he could play here. And to me, this was the hardest place for him to play by coming behind me. 
Chandler's legacy only enticed Josh even more. He took a walk-on role with Ball State, and the worst looked to be behind him. Sophomore year came. I remember I was kind of excited, and then I tore my ACL. So that year was just like a downfall for me. I felt bad for him, obviously, and it's a tough break. And, um, and you know, I think you're always asking if that happens a second time, is this guy still going to be able to play? I called him instantly, told him I tore my ACL. We both was down a little bit, but he just told me again, just, you already been here, you know what to do, you know how to get back. That's what really stood out to me as I first got to know him was his, his toughness. I dream big, I, I think big, so I knew if I worked, I was going to get playing time. I don't know what type of playing time I was going to get. I just knew I was going to work for it. I wasn't going to stop working until I got it. So I just kept working, kept working, and then I finally got that chance when I started playing, and that was like a huge relief for me. It's great to see someone who's worked that hard as he has and has really been as, as unselfish as Josh has been uh, in his time here. He's played well in a lot of big games for us. I never thought it was going to happen after all the downfalls I didn't have, but it's still crazy for me to think about. But I know, this, I know that all the hard work I put in was going to pay off eventually, so I'm actually proud that it actually happened. Everything that we went through, Father and son helped him for what he's going through today. I want everybody to remember me as somebody that never gave up, always stay focused on their dream, and always working hard to achieve their dream. Family is so important to many athletes, and seeing where Josh Thompson's roots came from makes it that much more exciting that basketball season is here. I know him and his dad are both looking forward to Cardinal games at Worthen Arena. Yeah, and we'll be seeing a whole lot of them, I think, in these next couple of months with basketball season going to be in full swing here. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Every Athlete Matters, presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. For Rachel Berry, I'm Ryan Klimchak. Thank you for watching, and be sure to follow Ball State Sports Link on all social media accounts. Just search at BSU Sports Link. We will see you next month.